I happen to like eating meat. It's really good. So sorry, vegans. But, um, you know, we can still learn from the vegans. We can still learn from the vegans. Start things off here. So as you guys know, uh, this is Rise Above Health, where we break down uh, different aspects of health optimization and biohacking. Uh, to help you guys reach peak healthy living and peak performance. That's the goal. Uh, that's the reason the brand exists. And um, that's why I'm here for. And uh, today's stream is going to be about carnivore diet versus vegan diet, uh, which is superior. I like to call this the diet wars. And, you know, we're going to be comparing and contrasting the two uh, to give you guys a sense of what might be good about one, what's good about the other, what's bad about, you know, what's bad about them both. And I think there's a lot of conflicting dietary information out there online nowadays with both camps kind of saying that their their way is best. And, you know, the other side is full of shit and crazy and all of that. So I uh, wanted to take some time today to just basically break that down and talk about some of the contrasts and what you can learn and apply to your own diet. Obviously, most people here tuning into the stream or watching this afterwards won't be carnivores or vegans purely, but, uh, you know, there's still a lot we can learn. And there's some very interesting information available out there on both diets, including some studies. So um, let's uh, let's just get into it. Um, so I got some notes. I'm going to work off those. And uh, yeah, let me just pull those up here. Gonna bring that in here, share. Awesome. I think that's probably best. Uh, so, and you guys will have to forgive me, this is actually my first stream here on Facebook. So I'm still getting used to do it to it a little bit, uh, but no worries. So I'll just put myself down in the corner. All right, so we're just going to have to rock with it until I find an optimal way to display the information. But either way, we've got it. So first off, let's go with the carnivore side of carnivore versus vegans, the uh, diet wars. And uh, what we're going to first look at is the meats aspect of, you know, dietary, you know, dietary satisfaction, nutrient density, all these types of things. So uh, firstly, with meats. The, the primary thing you're going to get there is uh, satiety. And uh, what s satiety means basically is you feel more full when you eat that food than something that is less satiating, uh, which means it has less satiety. So uh, meats are very satiating, meaning uh, protein fills you up very quickly. And, um, you know, you're, you're going to feel very full uh, for a period of time after you eat it. So uh, that's on the carnivore sides. Also, meats tend to be very nutrient dense and uh, have a lot of fats and a lot of protein. So that's what you're looking at there. Now, uh, as far as nutrient density goes, the most nutrient dense meats you can find are going to be organ meats. And uh, they, you know, those things might be things like beef liver, chicken liver, chicken hearts. Those are typically speaking the most nutrient dense. Um, but also, uh, you know, fresh caught fish, very nutrient dense oysters, also very nutrient dense. I mean, there's a whole list of them, um, a nice cut of, uh, you know, a nice cut of beef as well. And, uh, dark meat chicken also very nutrient dense. That's a good one. Um, but uh, as far as the nutrient density overall, um, in red meat, there is something called heme iron, heme, uh, H E M E heme. Uh, and heme iron is something that's only found in red meat and it's actually the best, uh, the best kind of iron. I believe it's the best absorbed. So, uh, that's in only in red meat. Also, um, red meat is also very dense in B vitamins. Uh, and, uh, most of you will know there's, you know, B, uh, I forget if there's a B one, but you know, there's uh, at least 12 B vitamins and the B vitamins are very important for your health because they provide uh, and work as catalysts and enzymes for a uh, cofactors, I should say, for a variety of different reactions in the body. 
including the production of neurotransmitters. So things like B6, very important, uh, B12, super important. And, um, you know, you, you really need those B vitamins. So, um, that's a great place to get those B vitamins. I'm not saying you can't get them in, uh, in vegetables, but, uh, just saying, you know, uh, meat and red meat in particular, very rich in iron, B vitamins, vitamin A. Uh, yeah. So oysters also have a lot of vitamin D. I love oysters and, uh, also zinc and selenium. So these are very hard to get nutrients and uh, are found in oysters. They're some of my favorite appetizers, and I think they're super refreshing as long as they're fresh caught. So uh, there's that. Um, also, chicken and fish contain high levels of choline, which is a nutrient that is essential for brain function and cognition. Now, uh, choline, I'm not sure if anybody here has seen my videos about choline and uh, the acetylcholine system of the brain. Acetylcholine is the primary neurotransmitter associated with memory and uh, also has to do with muscle movement as well. Uh, but it's memory memory storage and synthesis, acetylcholine. So um, the better functioning your acetylcholine system is, the better you are likely at forming memories and storing memories and remembering things. You need that, uh, you need that acetylcholine to perform those functions. So an acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter as well. Um, the choline is important in particular because it uh, acts as a precursor. It's a dietary precursor for the creation of acetylcholine. And, uh, you know, you ingest it from the food or the supplements or whatever. And, uh, you know, it uh, gets converted in the body uh, through various stages of transformation and comes out uh, as acetylcholine, that neurotransmitter. So, um, you know, for a proper brain function, uh, chicken and fish can be very, very useful. Um and for that, uh, that choline in particular as well. Um, also very rich in uh, choline is egg yolks. Egg yolks are great for choline. There's tons of choline in there and a bunch of other vitamins. So um, the, the carnivore side is looking pretty good here, I do have to say. Um, fish is uh, containing high levels of omega-3 fatty acids. Those are anti-inflammatory. Uh, fatty acids, and they're good as long as they, the fish is wild caught and not farmed. Uh, and that's because farmed fish tend to be treated with a whole bunch of chemicals and, you know, they have to be dyed for color. And, uh, you know, they're a lot less nutrient dense. The fish live in like crowded pens. Um, they tend to be swimming in their own, you know, you know what, and uh, it's just not a good time. So, and they're releasing probably stress hormones. So it's not going to end up being good for you, your diet, and, you know, you're, you're basically ingesting all of the byproducts of that process. So not fantastic, not to mention any hormones or treatments that they're using on the fish. So make sure your fish are fresh caught. Um, meat is uh, also actually, you know, before I get into that, uh, let me just open a link for you guys and just show you. Um, I've got a list and a variety of different meats and, uh, their nutrient contents. So, um, you could start off with uh, beef liver and, you know, this is, I'm bringing the facts, right. And bring the numbers and the stats. So, uh, for 100 grams of beef liver, you're looking at three, uh, sorry, 135 calories, 3.6 grams of fat, 20 grams of protein and about four grams of carbs. Now for the vitamins and the minerals, uh, vitamin A, 550% of daily value, vitamin B, 84% of daily value, uh, vitamin B12, 2,500% of daily value. Um, then there's thymine, 13%, riboflavin, 163%, niacin, folate, 66 and 73%. The choline I was talking about for, for brain function, 61%, uh, and then, you know, you've got your iron and magnesium, 62% uh, for iron, uh, phosphorus, 39%, uh, copper, 488%. Uh, and there is actually a delicate balance between, I believe it's copper and iron. So getting all that copper from the beef liver is going to be really beneficial for you. Um, also selenium, one of the important uh, 
precursors and cofactors for the creation of thyroid hormone, uh, 57% of the daily recommended uh, value. So um, that's fantastic. Uh, oysters, I was just talking about those. I really, really love oysters. I think they're delicious. Um, and uh, like I said, rich in vitamin D, zinc, selenium. Um, and you can look here at the stat sheet for, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more, uh, for the oysters. So for uh, 3.5 ounces of oysters, uh, you get 7 grams of protein. Is that 3.5 ounces? Yeah. Just wanted to make sure. 3.5 ounces of oysters, uh, 7 grams of protein, 2.5 grams of fat, 3.9 grams of carbs. Uh, okay, and then the vitamins, vitamin D, 80%. Uh, vitamin B12, 324%, zinc, 605%, copper, 223%, uh, selenium, 91%. So again, packing some serious weight with regard to uh, the nutrient density there. Um, there's also, they make mention of salmon roe. Uh, those are fish eggs. So rich in vitamin A, B, D, K2, zinc, iodine, omega-3 fatty acids. I'm not going to go into the um, the numbers there, but fish eggs very rich as well. So uh, ribeye steak, uh, 500 calories for seven ounces, uh, 55 grams of fat, 20 grams of saturated, uh, uh, 20 of grams of that are saturated. So that's a good bit of fat, uh, but also 50 grams of protein. And then for the vitamins, uh, let's say B2, uh, 35%, that's riboflavin, B3, 44%, B12, 245%. Um, and then, you know, things like magnesium, potassium, iron, copper, up to up to 30%, selenium, 93%, zinc, 113%. So that's, that's fallen. Um, and then there's anchovies, anchovies, B3, but how much servings is this? Three ounces, anchovies, 186% B3. Uh, what else? 186% selenium. Awesome. Beef kidney. Uh, we were talking about that. So liver, uh, beef liver, beef kidney, beef hearts, uh, chicken hearts, chicken liver. Uh, and so the beef kidney raw, 100 grams, um, 17 grams of protein, 3 grams of fat, 168% uh, B2, 12, sorry, wow, 1200% uh, B12. Uh, 50% B6, uh, 50% vitamin A, and 200% uh, selenium. So that's huge. And, you know, of course, oh, and then 58% iron. And, you know, that's not to mention all the smaller numbers here that I'm not mentioning. So uh, pork belly, lamb, uh, let's see what this had to say about lamb. Lamb, vitamin B12, zinc, glutathione. That's a very potent antioxidant in our in our body. Um, one of the, they call it the master antioxidant. So um maybe i'll just do the lamb and then we'll oh i'll do eggs actually so we have the lamb and then uh for eggs everybody's favorite protein uh 100 grams is 140 calories 10 grams of fat 12 grams of protein um vitamin b12 100 percent uh vitamin b2 33 percent uh let's see a bunch of other b vitamins 30 ish percent vitamin d 30 percent um, selenium, 50%, iodine, 33%. Interesting. They didn't make note of the, uh, they made note of the choline in the notes here, but, uh, they didn't add the percent or the amount. So, um, yeah. So again, these are all sort of meats, carnivore based diet items, and you can tell, uh, they're really packing with the, um, with the nutrition. So, uh, major, major heat, on that side with uh, with regard to nutrient density. So uh, back to the other items on the list uh, next. So besides the nutrient density, obviously, you know, there's quite a bit of that on the carnivore side. Um, meats provide fat as the primary source of food energy within the food uh, rather than glucose from carbs uh, like you'll get with vegetables and, uh, um, you know, other different types of carbohydrate based foods that you'll eat, you know, uh, breads, pastas, um, vegetables, any of those types of things. So, um, so the fat, uh, 
is ingested and can either be stored for later for energy, uh, used for cell repair, growth, and helps the immune system with certain functions. But of course, in excess, uh, things like saturated fats, polysaturated fats in particular can lead to arthrosclerosis, which is plaque buildup and uh, things like uh, prehypertension, hypertension, high blood pressure, um, you know, coronary artery disease, et cetera, you know, and uh, so on and so forth. So um, particularly because the fats, um, triglycerides and uh, LDL are the two fats we want to look out for. And those are present in uh, large amounts in uh, particularly triglycerides are present in large amounts in uh, a lot of the sort of fatty red meats that uh, that you might eat. So that can uh, be a source of trouble. And uh, it's one of the reasons why doctors tell people who have heart disease to stop eating red meat or re greatly reduce the amount of red meat that they eat, uh, likely because they have a lot of uh, triglycerides floating around in their system, a lot of LDL, and, uh, you know, it's clogging up their arteries and uh, all of that. So that's one side of things to be familiar with. Uh, of course, you know, the understanding of coronary artery disease, though the science has been going on for quite some time, you know, uh, it's still evolving. And there are actually people on the carnivore side of the fence that uh, believe that um, our misunderstanding of cholesterol, is, sorry, our understanding of cholesterol is flawed to a degree, and that uh, high levels of, uh, let's say, triglycerides and uh, things like that aren't as bad. It's not in the context of, uh, let's say, insulin resistance or um, high blood glucose and things like that. So, uh, and you know, there's definitely, there's definitely some consideration to be made there, but, uh, you know, there are, uh, also things like genetics to take into account. Some people metabolize fats way better. Uh, some people naturally have higher HDL, some people, um, nutrient partition better. Some people are, uh, yeah. So, uh, some people partition their, uh, fat better as well. So, um, all of those things, uh, not, so not to get off track, but, you know, do keep that in mind. Um, just make sure you're monitoring your saturated fat intake, um, and vary your diet, but we'll, we'll get to that. Also the protein in the meat, uh, is repurposed, uh, for building with building within the body and creating tissues, performing actions, uh, various actions in the body. So, um, I think everyone, uh, even most people on a basic level understand protein is for building things. So, and performing things within the body. Um, another point in the, uh, the carnivore category is actually, uh, meats can be good. A pure meat based diet can actually be good for autoimmunity. So, uh, many foods, many food, uh, allergies that you'll see and hear about, uh, and intolerances are actually triggered by uh, things like nuts, seeds, uh, and, uh, cruciferous and leafy green, uh, dark green vegetables. So, um, those are some foods that can actually, depending on your genetics, uh, but also for a lot of people in general can irritate the gut lining and, uh, lead to, you know, autoimmunity and production of, uh, let's say, uh, IgG and IgE antibodies, uh, against certain foods. So, and they can actually test for this. Uh, if you go to a gastroenterologist, um, a good one, you know, I mean, they could probably do skin testing uh, to see if you're allergic, but also they can, you know, they can do blood testing and see if you have those antibodies. Um, there's actually a variety of uh, services out there as well. If, uh, if that's something you're interested in, uh, I've gotten it done before. I didn't do anything major, but I think I did like an Everly well uh, antibody, uh, food antibody test that so that was interesting or food uh, sensitivity test. So, um, I'll have to look into it some more to make some, some real recommendations and that's probably coming up. Um, so, uh, yeah, so those foods like, you know, nuts, seeds, leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables, they can irritate your gut lining. And I've seen several examples of people, uh, reversing or reducing chronic illness and autoimmunity by going carnivore. Um, actually a very notable example would be Michaela and Jordan Peterson. Um, but I have also seen cases of Lyme disease, um, in some cases go into remission or get back under control, uh, with carnivore diet as well. Um, I think, and I think that's due in part to the fact that 
uh, these things, these vegetables and uh, nuts that I've been talking about, you know, they can cause some degree of irritation and depending on your genetics, um, you know, can severely irritate your system and uh, compound any existing problems you've got going on. You know, you might have environmental sensitivities. You might have been exposed to some pathogen or um, all different kinds of things, right? So uh, in some cases, carnivore can actually potentially reverse autoimmunity and uh, chronic illness, or at the very least, get it back under control. Um, also, leafy greens. Uh, uh, well, you know what? I'll, I'll keep that. Uh, I'll keep that in the vegan section. We're about to get to the vegan section. So um, also animal protein obviously is very high uh, quality protein and excellent for building muscle. So if you're looking to make gains in the gym, um, you can do that as well. Um, so I think that covers sort of the, the potential upsides and some of the concerns about a carnivore diet to uh, um, ethics aside. I mean, of course, you know, vegans, besides touting what they believe the health benefits to be of their diet, uh, they will also knock carnivore for being inhumane and lacking compassion, etc. So, I mean, it comes down to the individual where you lay on that. Uh, I happen to like eating meat. Um, you know, I've been vegetarian before. I've been like ovo lacto vegetarian before, um, but uh, it left me lacking in certain uh, nutrients. So. Uh, and at the end of the day, it tastes really good. So sorry, vegans, but, um, you know, we can still learn from the vegans. We can still learn from the vegans. So let's move on to the vegan section. Um, so for vegans, veganism, um, plants equals energy and or glucose slash carbs plus fiber. So that's plants. Uh, and that includes all the cl traditional classic plants that you might think of like, uh, spinach, uh, you know, fruits, grapes, uh, kale. I'm really struggling to think of vegetables right now. Um, you know, cauliflower, uh, asparagus, you name it, right? It's all carbs and fiber, right? That's, that's mostly it. And so maybe some protein, there's protein in there, uh, to a small degree as well. Uh, and, uh, there may be, there are some, um, uh, plants that are, or, you know, roots, let's say, that are particularly uh, protein dense or more so than others. But, um, you know, they don't, it's not quite the same with meats. But let's cover the, uh, let's cover the, the, the vegan, the vegan diet. So uh, since it's glucose and carbs, and uh, it's very energy dense and has high glucose. Um, so great for energy, like quick energy. Uh, fruits have a lot of sugar in the form of fructose. Um, whereas breads and pastas, uh, without egg, of course, because vegans don't eat eggs, um, also come with a high carbohydrate load, uh, which converts to glucose on digestion. Um, I haven't met any vegan diabetics, but, um, I encourage them to be careful with the fruit. Um, I know there are like fruitarians out there. They just eat pure fruit, but I think those people probably have, uh, some, exceptional ability, genetically gifted ability to process uh, sugar in their, um, you know, and partitioning and using sugar. Um, so um, the positives of uh, the vegan diet, obviously very high fiber. Um, lots of fiber is good for your gut, uh, particularly fermented uh, foods and veggies uh, are excellent for your gut. Uh, good for diversity, good for healthy microbes, you know, antimicrobials, uh, healthy strains of uh, bacteria that can uh, exist in the gut. You know, if you have uh, a lot, a lot of fiber, that's really good for you. Also, you know, and fermented stuff too, um, it lends itself to biodiversity in the gut. So uh, that's one really great aspect of veganism is you're like very likely to have a diverse uh, microbiome. Um, and, uh, you know, a meat heavy diet and fat, fat heavy diets are, let's say saturated fat, heavy diets, uh, animal based Western fat diets, right. They're more likely to have, um, let's say actinobacteria and proteobacteria, uh, which are, you know, there's beneficial strains of both of those, uh, phylum, but, um, you know, there's also some 
pathogenic ones as well you have to watch out for. So uh, that's probably a W on the vegan side. Also, um, veganism, you know, like I said, you have these insoluble fibers and fermented foods. Um, they're, that's great for the creation of short chain fatty acids. So, uh, that's going to ferment in the gut and, uh, those short chain fatty acids are created as a result. And those are very important and provide a variety of regulatory functions that, uh, regulate appetite metabolism, and also can prevent and regulate certain types of disease states. So, uh, for example, beauty rate, beauty rate. Um, is one of the three major forms of short chain fatty acids and has been shown in studies, uh, more rat models, but some human models as well to help protect against uh, colon cancer. So in a big way, in a big way. So, um, you know, supplementing butyrate, not a bad thing either. Um, but uh, vegan diets, you know, you're likely to have quite a bit of uh, beauty rate production from your uh, fermented uh, veggies. So or, you know, veggie fermentation in your gut. Um, by the way, those, uh, that fermentation is done by bacteria, um, that's there in the gut. So, uh, that's how that happens. So it's sort of a, a symbiotic relationship. Um, the, you know, the, the, uh, bacteria feed off the, the fibers that we eat, and then, uh, they turn around and produce these sort of beneficial, uh, fatty acids. So as a byproduct. Uh, vegan, also likely, um, on a slightly different note, likely uh, good for heart health as a significant reduction of saturated fats in the vegan diet uh, and polysaturated fats and things like that would likely lead to lower cholesterols and reduced LDL in particular. Now, LDL, as I mentioned, is one of those bad bad forms of cholesterol, um, as far as we know. And, um, you know, vegans... Um, it's very rare you hear about a vegan having a heart attack. So, I mean, I'm sure it can happen, but um, yeah. So that's one of the upsides of the vegan diet. Uh, so um, based on, and and uh, yeah, okay, let me say that. Based on your uh, genetics, you might benefit from this type of diet. And especially if you are predisposed to high cholesterol and high blood pressure, uh, increasing veggies and uh, lowering polysaturated fats and saturate meat, meat-based saturated fats in general would be beneficial for you. So um, along with a, a exercise regimen, you know, in consultation with your doctor, things like that. So um, yeah. And then the other thing I will say again, you know, plant-based diet, um, particularly if you're eating fruits uh, or any sort of high glycemic carbohydrates, uh, it's a lot of glucose. Uh, you're going to have a lot of energy flowing through your system. So you're going to feel great. And then you're going to crash hard later. Um, so, you know, I'd be very careful eating lots of fruit uh, and try to mix that up with some, pro uh, mix up your carbs uh, with some protein to help cut the glycemic load, have a healthier um, level of blood glucose and, um, you know, better, you'll have better nutrient partitioning and, um, you know, it'll get used better over a longer period of time, instead of just going ahead and storing as fat, um, you know, leading to things like, uh, fatty acid buildup and, and, uh, clogged arteries and things like that. So, um, yeah. So, and, uh, just then just a couple of notes from a study I found, uh, comparing the diets. I thought this was very interesting. So, uh, by the way, guys, if you're enjoying the stream, Make sure to give it a, a thumbs up on the post and just leave a comment uh, so, um, you know, other folks can see you enjoyed it and that you were here, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, let's see. Nutrient density. Um, and I'm going to pull this article up in a second, but uh, uh, I'll pull it up now so you guys can see the title. I like to be transparent. So this is from an article called Vegan Diets, Practical Advice for athletes and exercisers uh, from, uh, I'm not sure, J International so Society of Sports Nutrition 2017. Um, so that's what the notes are from. Um, so uh, from their analysis, and I like to look at, uh, when I'm looking at things for my health, I like to look at uh, studies uh, for the gen general population, of course, but I like to look at athlete studies because um, they can be very informative of, you know, somebody who's looking to be a high performer, uh, you want to study athletes, right? Because they have to be very sharp 
and uh, physically fit and uh, ideally healthy, all of those things, right? So um, nutrient density, uh, quote, data indicates vegans consume less energy than omnivores. Omnivore meaning you eat both meat and vegetables. Um, research suggests that vegan diets generally appear to be lower in protein, fat, vitamin B12, vitamin B2, vitamin D, calcium, iron, and zinc when compared to omnivorous diets. Um, also, the digestibility of plant-based protein appears to be less than that of animal products, which might need to be accounted for when designing a vegan diet. Um, also, on the note of, let's say, fatty acids, um, the, the things that you find in your fish oil and, uh, um, you know, the short chain, medium and long chain fatty acids. But let's think about like fish oil, right? So we have EPA and... Uh, a, uh, DHA, and then there's something called ALA. Uh, vegans appear to consume fewer of those fish oil type fatty acids and possess lower serum fatty acid levels than omnivores and other ver vegetarians even. Um, so this might have an important impact on health and performance implications. The fatty acids are important for normal growth and development and appear to uh, play an important role in cardiovascular health and inflammatory and chronic disease and might improve exercise-induced bronchoconstriction and immunity. So um, I guess for athletes, that means um, fatty acids can be helpful if uh, you're having a hard time uh, breathing or you have overly tight, uh, I'm going to say overly tight, that sounds ridiculous, but you know, if you have problems breathing, you have problems with your lungs, uh, bronchoconstriction, right? So, uh, and also immunity. Um, now, there are... Um, well, actually, let me let me do this, and then I'll I'll pull this one up. Um, I brought up an article on um, the vitamins for meats, and then uh, I found uh, I wanted to point out for this for any vegans or people who are interested in getting more nutrients via plants, or you know, you want to up your vegetables. Um, you know, if you've got like heart issues or anything like that. Uh, so, inourishgently.com. Um, they have an article called, uh, the exact vegan food to literally get you every single nutrient you will ever need. Um, bold statement, but, uh, it does seem fairly comprehensive. So they also have recipes and I found this on Google. I don't know these people, but, um, it looks pretty legit. So vitamin A, uh, tons of suggestions, you know, avocados, bananas, uh, mangoes, uh, yellow squash, cherries, peppers, cabbage, vitamin B1, thymine, alfalfa sprouts, uh, cacao, lentils, parsley, you know, vitamin B2, B3, you know, B5, all of those things. So there's a ton of recommendations for all the B vitamins. Um, let's see if they have, they have vitamin A, uh, yep, all the way up through the Bs, choline, B complex, folic acid, um, uh, vitamin C, vitamin D. So I, I think, I think you guys get the point. So that's inourishgently.com If you want to step up your nutrient game and diversify, uh, your sources, or if you're vegan. Um, and then finally, I wanted to show you guys the table from that, uh, study I just pulled up. So I'm going to go to table three. So, uh, here they have in the study, a diet comparison. Uh, where did it go? Table three. Okay, here we go. Diet comparison of possible issues, uh, sport-related issues and recommendations between omnivorous, uh, pesco-vegetarian, lacto-ovo-vegetarian, and vegan diets. So if we just take a quick look here, you will see um, possible dietary issues with uh, uh, omnivore, meaning meat and veggies. Uh, poor diets uh, can lead to nutrient deficiency. Uh, vitamin D deficiency possible if sun exposure is poor or unlikely. So that's an issue for, uh, let me look up ad libitum actually, because uh, I like to look up words and I've never heard that term before. Latin, obviously a medical term, ad libitum, uh, okay. In music, biology, and drama, often short to ad lib. Oh, so ad lib. <laughs> ad lib is short for ad libitum, guys. I did not know that. Uh, so ad libitum at your discretion. So, um, so it says poor uh, ad lib diets can lead to nutrient deficiency. Vitamin D deficiency is possible if sun exposure is poor. Um, 
let's see, sport-related issues, male and female athletes with low energy intake at risk of nutrient deficiencies, uh, calcium requirements increased during um, a variety of states. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure about that, actually. Um, recommendations. Energy intake should be scaled to activity level on an omnivorous diet. Uh, what else does it say? Uh, micronutrient rich diet sufficient to achieve daily recommended values, uh, vitamin D three supplement might be necessary. So, um, based on this for athletes, you know, omnivores, and I like to compare myself to athletes so I can continue to, uh, aspire to that level of, uh, let's say physical, mental, etc. I like to look at, look and compare to those people. So, um, you know, if you're an omnivore, according to the study here, this, uh, um, uh, this journal, uh, you might want to take a look at your vitamin D levels and, um, you know, consider supplementing with D3. I do 10,000 IUs a day uh, with a little bit of uh, vitamin K2 thrown in there. Uh, pesco, veg pesco vegetarian, same as omnivores, uh, plus energy and protein. Uh, risk of iron deficiency uh, with and without anemia in female athletes. Um, and then for the recommendations for pesco vegetarian, which is just fish and veggies, uh, same as omnivores, plus make sure you get your iron needs through a variety of food sources. Uh, Lacto-ova vegetarian and lacto-vegetarian, meaning uh, milk, eggs, and uh, veggies, I think. So um, as far as possible dietary issues for those people, um, same as the uh, same issues with energy and protein, uh, plus uh, the fish oils we were talking about before. Iron, zinc, uh, vitamin, uh, I think uh, B2, riboflavin, I think it's B2. Uh, deficiencies are more likely. Um, let's see. Uh, for those people, uh, possible sport issues, reduced muscle, creatine, and carcinine, carnosine, excuse me, stores. Uh, don't worry about that. And so they recommend for those people to take uh, fish oil supplements, uh, supplement zinc, maybe some iron. And uh, finally, the vegans. Uh, possible dietary issues, same as the vegetarians. Uh, so everything previously mentioned for the vegetarians plus protein, fat, uh, B12, calcium, iodine deficiencies are also possible. Um, what was this one? Uh, sport related issues for vegans, low bone mineral density, uh, possible in female athletes achieving energy balance might be a problem for larger athletes. So, um, you know, if you're eating a lot of carbs and fiber, but you're not eating a lot of fats and protein, you can have um, some type of Im imbalance there in terms of energy. I think that's what they're saying. Nice, steady blood glucose, nice, balanced uh, energy level, right? Um, and then the recommendations for uh, vegans, same as the vegetarians. So fish oil supplement, vegans can't have fish oil supplements. Um so they need to get uh, those fatty acids somewhere, EPA and DHA, uh, increase protein and uh, make sure you're eating nuts, seeds, oils, and avocados to reach your fat goals. Also, uh, you might want to look into B, uh, sorry, D3, vitamin D3 supplements at B12, iodine as well, and make sure you're eating plenty of uh, beans and things like that for calcium. So uh, that is, again, from a study. Uh, from the Journal of Interna uh, International Sports Nutrition, 2017. Um, so that's that. And uh, yeah, I think that's... Oh, and then there was just table number four. And then I think we'll wrap up. It's been a nice long stream. Um, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Be very curious to hear what you think about all this. Um, so table four, uh, vegan-friendly food sources for uh, different nutrients. So for proteins, uh, uh, grains, legumes, tofu, quinoa, nuts, seeds, and veggies. Um, they have suggestions for the uh, fatty acids, ALA, EPA, and DHA. Um, uh, vitamin B12, supplements, fortified foods, plant milks, nutritional yeast, fermented soy, mushrooms. You're really kind of stuck for B12, uh, honestly. Uh, those are pretty rough options, but I mean, hey, that's just me. Uh, you can supplement, um, you can do like almond milk and oat milk, maybe, um, I'm not sure what other plant milks have high B12, um, iron, legumes, grains, nuts, seeds, fortified foods, and green veggies. 
zinc, beans, nuts, seeds, oats, wheat, germs, and nutritional yeast, calcium, uh, tofu, fortified plant milks, juice, kale, broccoli, etc. Iodine seaweed is a good one. Potatoes, uh, iodized salt, and then for vitamin D3, lichen derived D3 supplements. So I guess that would be a vegan supplement, right? Um, so yeah, that's the broad view, top down, uh, investigation, let's say on, um, carnivores versus vegans. So, um, my takeaway here and what I would like to say, I mean, some people here might be carnivores. Some people here might be, uh, vegan. Some people or most people probably eat, eat both meat and vegetables. So, um, I think my takeaway here is, um, there's benefits and drawbacks to both diets. Um, I think if someone has autoimmunity, they might want to give carnivore a try. Uh, if they're trying to build muscle, carnivores, um, definitely a good way to go. Um, provided you can hit your calorie and your macros, et cetera. Um, you know, if you're looking for nutrient dense foods and you're deficient in the B vitamins, uh, zinc, selenium, you know, all of that stuff, uh, iron, heme iron, you know, if you've got a, uh, an iron problem, you're going to probably want to eat meat. Um, and uh, fish, of course, lots of omega-3 fatty acids. Those are anti-inflammatory. Uh, choline, uh, vitamin A, you name it. And uh, on the downside for the carnivore, uh, obviously high saturated fat levels uh, can be problematic. And potentially uh, for some people that can lead to, uh, what do you call it, uh, coronary artery disease or like pre-hypertension uh, or you know hypertensive states. So uh, if you're going carnivore, uh, I would just keep an eye on your, uh, cholesterol, make sure it doesn't get uh, out of control. Uh, again, you know, some carnivores will claim that, uh, the cholesterol levels don't matter. Um, and it's other factors, but you know, you got to go based off the current science and obviously you don't want to get uh, burned. So, uh, don't play with fire. And, you know, if your cholesterol is starting to go up, make some adjustments, talk to a doctor. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the, uh, overall view on the meat side. And then on the vegan side, um, lots of energy, uh, lots of carbs, fiber. So good for fermentation, good for your gut, good for short chain fatty acid production. Um, what else? Uh, good for heart health, likely, um, lower fat. It's a lower saturated fat, saturated and polysaturated fat diet. So that's good for your heart. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, lots of energy on the con side. Um, it's hard to get your nutrients uh, in, but you can find ways to do that. Uh, you know, I mentioned that website. Um, what was it called? Uh, I nourish gently. That's uh, that's out there. But uh, you have to really go for a diverse range of sources if you're a vegan to meet all your nutrient requirements. So uh, additionally, you know, less protein dense. Uh, the quality of the protein is allegedly lower. Um, and, um, you know, protein, fat, the B vitamins, you know, vitamin D, calcium, et cetera. Omnivores uh, tend to do better there and probably carnivores as well. And uh, obviously the uh, vegans, their diets are lower in fatty acids, the anti-inflammatory kind, right? So uh, uh, probably both inflammatory and anti-inflammatory, but you need those, omega, omega, sorry, omega-3s, um, very necessary for you. So um, yeah, so all in all, is there a winner? Is there a loser? Uh, if I was going to pick a winner, I would personally go for carnivore, but um, both sides have sufficient pros and enough cons for me to say, I think it's best for everybody to take a, uh, as you like approach, uh, mix and match, go omnivore. I think, um, if you like to dabble with, um, you know, experimenting with carnivore diet, I think that's cool. If you want to try going vegan, that's also cool. Um, and yeah, so I think you guys can tell there's pros and cons and, but you can benefit from, from both sides of the fence. So, um, yeah, so I think that's going to do it for tonight's stream. Uh, I hope those of you that stopped by enjoyed and, uh, the information was useful and you can apply this to your diet, your life as well. Um, so, you know, leave a like, um, drop a comment, uh, join the Facebook group. Um, it's called, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, biohacking and health optimization rise above health. Uh, I can invite you if you're a friend. So add me as a friend on Facebook. 
Um, also Instagram, uh, YouTube. I've got links for both of those on uh, my Facebook profile, Josh Anama. And um, yeah, if you're on Instagram or you're watching this on YouTube, check out the other platforms. So come add me on Facebook, uh, Rise Above Health. And, um, you know, check out Instagram as well. If you're on Instagram, come join the Facebook group. It's all the rage, man. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining. I hope this was informative. And uh, everybody have a great night. I'm out.